kia là nó khá là hai người đều mất cả hai người. Everyone should mute their screen until we're ready to talk. We will begin in two minutes. What you are seeing now are pictures that were taken at the time of the negotiation of the People's Peace Treaty in Saigon and Hanoi. I should say pictures taken by Doug Hostetter. Who is that person? Okay, Doug, I think, and them. Okay. Let's uh, just wait. Okay. Okay. Sorry. All right, great. All right, well, welcome. We are have uh, 39 people in the audience and expect a few more to come, but we don't want to keep people waiting. Um, my name is John McAuliffe. I coordinate the Vietnam Peace Commemoration Committee, which is the sponsor or organizer of this program. Uh, in this case, the co-sponsor 
with the Vietnam USA Society of the Vietnam Union of Friendship Organizations. Um, the VPCC is a voluntary effort to try to make the record of the anti-war movement while its participants are still here to participate in the making of the record. And we have now had eight or nine programs. This is the second program to discuss the People's Peace Treaty. The first one, this one will be available on YouTube. The first one is already on YouTube. The first one covers the history of the People's Peace Treaty in the United States, its use as an educational and organizing tool. And this one is looking at how it actually was created. Um, we're very honored to be doing this with the Vietnam USA Society. Uh, and the co-moderator, Nguyen Yi, will now introduce the Vietnamese participants. Nhi. So you have to unmute yourself now. Uh, unmute, yeah. Thank you, John. So I would like to greet you to all of you, distinguished guests, American Vietnamese friends, and two participants and audience. This is my great pleasure for me to to attend and also act as moderator with John today at the webinar friendship meeting uh, on the 50th anniversary of the signing of People Peace Treaty. I would like to introduce the president of the meeting in Hanoi uh, today, Madame Nguyen Phuong Nga, former ambassador of Vietnam to the United Nations, former deputy minister of foreign affairs, president of the Vietnam Union of Friendship Organization. On the panelists, I would like to introduce Mr. Nguyen Van Quỳnh, former Vice President of Vietnam Peace Committee, member of Executive Board of the Vietnam USA Society. <laughs> Mr. Phạm Văn Trương, President of Committee for Solidarity with Asia, Africa and Latin America, member of Presidium of the Vietnam Union of Friendship Organizations. So, uh, and uh, today at the um, uh, meeting in Hanoi uh, and in the Wufo office, we are also participants, officers and staff from the American department and, uh, and some representative from uh, some department of Wufo as a people at coordinating committee upon the department. We're losing your sound. Uh, communication and reporter from mass media reporter in Ho Chi Minh City at the Wufo representative office. I would like to introduce, welcome to three panelists there, Mr. Huynh Tân Mung, president of the Saigon Student Union. Yes, he is one of the uh, four signers of the People PGT. So what is it? He chose there. So, Bam. It's in here. Yes. Mr. Nguyễn Chou, representative from the South Vietnam Liberation Union. She also a signer of the PPT. Mr. Phương Thiện, Mrs. Ngo Thị Phương Thiện, member of Executive Committee of Ho Chi Minh City Peace and Development Foundation and Secretary General of the Peace Committee of Ho Chi Minh City. Daughter of... Uh, yeah, the, and the daughter of uh, lawyer Ngo Ba Thanh. Mm -hmm. And uh, today also Mr. Nguyen Hong Tư there, or no? No. Uh, we have uh, Ms. Chan Thi Thu Thuy, the head of the Ho Chi Minh City based representative office of Vietnam Union of Friendship Organization. This is Nguyen Thi Hong Diễm. Vice President of Ho Chi Minh City Union of Friendship Organization. And of course, uh, staff and uh, sensitive from uh, Wufo office in Ho Chi Minh City and uh, Wufo. So to start the um, uh, meeting today, I would like to introduce and advise Ambassador Nguyen Phuong Nga, President of Vietnam Union of Friendship Organization, make some welcome remarks. Thank you. 
Warmest greetings to all from Hanoi. I'm so happy to see all of you and thank you very much for participating in our great event today. Yes, so dear Americans and Vietnamese friends, we are meeting here today to commemorate an event of great significance. 50 years ago, representative of four student organizations from the USA and Vietnam, including the US National Student Association, the Saigon Student Union, the Vietnam National Union of Students, and the South Vietnam Liberation Student Union, signed the People's Peace Treaty. The treaty was an important result of the cooperation between our two peoples, a resounding call to end the unjust war the United States government was conducting in Vietnam, and a reflection of the common aspirations of the Vietnamese and American people for peace, independence, and freedom. The treaty boosted the morale of the anti-war movements of the youth and peace-loving people in the United States encourage the Vietnamese patriots and play an important part of the efforts to end the war and restore peace in Vietnam. Dear friends, I highly appreciate the initiative to organize our friendship meeting to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the People's Peace Treaty sponsored by the Vietnam Peace Commemoration Committee the Vietnam US Society and the Vietnam Union of Friendship Organizations. These days of April, the Vietnamese people are also celebrating the 46th anniversary of the reunification of our country. As the Vietnamese proverb goes, remember the source when you drink water and remember the grower when you eat the food. Looking back at the how the idea of the People's Peace Treaty was conceived and realized, we pay tribute to our friends who made great contributions, sacrifices to put forward these great initiatives and make it happen. The Vietnamese people always remember with deep gratitude, the precious, tremendous support and assistance rendered by Americans and people all over the world those who are with us today, those who couldn't be present, and those who have gone to rest in eternal peace, to our pursuit of peace, independence, the unification, national constructions and defense, as well as the normalization and remarkable developments of Vietnam-US relations today. Dear friends, our world is undergoing huge and complex changes. Peace, cooperation, and development are faced with many obstacles, difficulties, and confronted by great traditional and non-traditional security threats. In these situations, people's interna international solidarity and cooperation are all the more important. The recent 13th Congress of the Communist Party of Vietnam has defined the goals, vision, and aspirations of Vietnam to become a socialist-oriented developed country with high income by the mid-21st century. Vietnam continues to implement the consistent foreign policy of independence, self-reliance, peace, friendship, cooperation, development, diversification, and multilateralization of external relations proactive, comprehensive, and in-depth international integration, being a friend, a reliable partner, and an active and responsive member of the international community. We will spare no efforts to expand relations and boost cooperation with political and social forces and the people of other countries, striving for peace, national independence, democracy, development cooperation, and social progress. I believe that the friendship meeting today is an excellent opportunity for us to discuss directions and measures to promote friendships and solidarity, improve the effectiveness of cooperation between the Vietnamese and American people, 
especially between the youth, students, and younger generations, in order to jointly heal the wounds of war, develop and usher the Vietnam-US comprehensive partnership in a new and better stage of development on the basis of equality, mutual respect, and mutual benefit, contributing to peace, cooperation, and sustainable development in the region and the world over. I would like to thank you and wish you all good health, happiness, and success. May our event be crowned with splendid success. So thank you very much indeed. And uh, I'm sorry because um, and I'm so sorry to say that because I have another engagement that cannot be rescheduled and I must be there in uh, some minutes. So I have to run and I'm sorry that I have to part with you at this moment. But thank you very much for the organizations, for your participation, and thank you for all the efforts you have made to consolidate our friendships. So thank you and wish you all the best. So nice to see all of you here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ambassador Nya, who is an old friend from her time at the United Nations. And we're very happy that she has taken on the leadership of the Union of Friendship Organizations. Um, I will be moderating this first portion of the program. Mm -hmm. um, I said that this, this webinar is a little different from the first one and that it's focusing on the creation of the People's Peace Treaty. The whole two, two webinar process has been like a detective story, a, a discovery of how things happened that we didn't fully even understand at the time. And we just discovered last night where the seed came from for the People's Peace Treaty. So we're gonna go in a slightly different order and start with the planting of the seed. Turn to Wintan Mam in Ho Chi Minh City. Mam. Xin chào các bạn. Như các bạn đã biết. Louder. Và yêu chuyện hòa bình thuộc về bản chất và truyền thống chống xâm lăng của nhân dân Việt Nam. Lịch sử của dân tộc ta hàng ngàn năm đã chứng minh điều đó. Yeah, you have to have the microphone. Yeah, the microphone directly in front of you, please. As you all know, the history of the Vietnamese nation for thousands of years has proven that the spirit of patriotism and love of peace belong to the characteristic and tradition of the Vietnamese people against aggression. Uh, he in Hanoi, turn, please turn off your microphone. Go ahead, Mom. Một khi được khơi dậy, thì được toàn dân ủng hộ và hưởng ứng. Tôi là một trong những người dân yêu nước để được tín nhiệm làm đại diện sinh viên. Tôi phải học giỏi, tích cực đấu tranh cho quyền lợi sinh viên. Dũng cảm tham gia vào các phong trào hòa bình, dân sinh, dân chủ và trả giá đắt cái máu xương của chúng ta chỉ vì mong muốn đất nước hòa bình, độc lập, tránh cảnh chết chóc, đau thương cho nhân dân Việt Nam. So uh, one such uh, patriotism is aroused, it will be fully supported and responded by the entire people and will surely achieve victory eventually. And I am uh, the very uh, excellent student. I need to uh, stand up and to protect uh, the um, Vietnamese students and the Vietnamese nation as well. Để đấu phó với cuộc, các cuộc đấu tranh ngày càng lớn mạnh chưa từng có của thanh niên, học sinh, sinh viên Việt Nam, chính quyền Sài Gòn tập trung toàn lực Bắt bớ đánh đập tra tấn giả man sinh viên học sinh trong tay không một tất sắc. Chính các cuộc tra tấn tàn bạo đó để buộc tội sinh viên học sinh bị bắt đã gây xúc động và phẫn nộ của nhân dân trong nước và trên thế giới. To cope with the ever-growing protests of the young Vietnamese student, 
the Saigon government put all its efforts to suppress, arrest, and torture the unarmed students. It was brutal torture to accuse the arrested student that antagonized and outraged people in the country and all around the world. Trí thức, sinh viên học sinh trong nước đồng loạt lên tiếng và tổ chức biểu tình khắp nơi. Trí thức, sinh viên thế giới xuống đường khắp nơi ủng hộ sinh viên học sinh và nhân dân Việt Nam đòi Mỹ rút quân, đòi trả tự do cho sinh viên học sinh bị bắt. Intellectuals, students in the country simultaneously spoke up and protested everywhere. Intellectuals, students around the world took the street to support Vietnamese students and people to demand U.S. withdrawal and freeing the arrested students. Nhiều tuyên bố kháng thư của các tổ chức quốc tế gửi về tuyên bố và phản đối chiến tranh Việt Nam và ủng hộ cuộc đấu tranh chính nghĩa của sinh viên học sinh và nhân dân Việt Nam đòi hòa bình, đòi quyền tự quyết dân tộc Việt Nam diệt kiều các trí thức của các nước Hoa Kỳ, Pháp, Nhật, Canada, Hòa Lan và nhiều nước khác rầm rộ xuống đường chưa từng có. Many statements and letters of disagreement were sent out by international organizations declaring opposition to Vietnam War and supporting the fight of Vietnam people and students for their peace and self-determination. The Vietnamese people living abroad and intellectuals from the United States, France, Japan, Canada, uh, the, the Netherlands and other countries swam to the streets like never before to voice their opinions. Trong khi ra tay đàn áp dữ dội, trí thức thanh niên học sinh sinh viên trong nước, chính quyền Sài Gòn cũng không cho phép các lãnh đạo sinh viên và trí thức đối lập ở Việt Nam ra nước ngoài khi có thư mời của các nước bạn. Why violent, uh, why violently uh, suppressing young intellectuals and students in the country? The Saigon government also did not allow student leaders and opposing Vietnamese intellectuals to go abroad, even when they had invitations from uh, other countries' friends. Vì lý do đó, tổng hội sinh viên và trí thức Hoa Kỳ và các nước bí mật đến Việt Nam bằng đường du lịch. Ngay tức khắc, đêm 30 tháng 6, 1970, chúng tôi đã mở một cuộc họp bí mật và mở một cuộc hội thảo tại chùa Ấn Quang do Thượng tọa Thích Thiện Hoa chủ trì ủng hộ và ra tuyên bố chung Việt Mỹ sáng hôm sau mở một cuộc hội thảo khác tại Đại học Quốc gia Nông nghiệp Chủ tịch sinh viên Hoa Kỳ Sạp Phân Mơ đọc tuyên bố chung tiếp sau đó là cuộc xuống đường rầm rộ tiến về tòa đại sứ Mỹ với hàng ngàn người sinh viên học sinh và đồng bào các giới. Chủ Chủ tịch Tổng hội sinh viên Hoa Kỳ Sạp Phân Mơ, Chủ tịch sinh viên Sài Gòn Quỳnh Tấn Mẫm đi đầu trong cuộc xuống đường với chim bồ câu trắng và chiếc quan tài đỏ tượng trưng cho cuộc tàn khốc vũ diệt của chiến tranh Việt Nam. Cụ biểu tình đó đã bị đàn áp giả mang bằng Giờ rồng, rượu đạn cai, phi tiễn, phái đoàn sinh viên Hoa Kỳ và trí thức các nước bị tống xuất về nước. For that reason, the United States National Student Associations and other countries secretly traveled to Vietnam with tourism purpose. Immediately on the night of June 20th, 1970, we secretly contact Venerable Thích Thiện Hoa, the abode of uh, Ấn Quang Pagoda, to open a uh, secretly international conference, issuing a joy Vietnam American statement. The next morning, an, uh, another conference at uh, National Agriculture, um, uh, Agricultural University, the president of the United States National Student Association, Shark Bummer, read the joy statement. Follow a massive street rally toward the US embassy including thousands of people, college students, 
peoples uh, of different sectors. Uh, the United States uh, National Student Association President Sha Palmer and the Saigon Student Union President Huynh Tân Mẫm led the protest demonstration while holding a white fluffy doll that presents peace and a red coffin that symbolized the devastation of the war. The protests were brutally suppressed using water cannon, tear gas grenade, and rocket launchers. The delegation of the American student and intellectuals were expelled to America later as shot. Về sau, các chủ tịch tổng hội sinh viên Hoa Kỳ và các nước tiếp theo như là David Ipsin, Stephen King cũng đã gọi thư gửi gửi thư ủng hộ cuộc đấu tranh chính nghĩa của sinh viên học sinh và nhân dân Việt Nam. They after the next president of Student Union of America and other countries such as David Ipsin Uh, Thay Ban Kin also sent letters to support the righteous fight of Vietnamese students and people. Trong các cuộc họp giữa Sa Pân Mơ và uh, Chủ tịch sinh viên Sài Gòn và Hội đồng đại diện sinh, sinh viên và học sinh uh, Sài Gòn đã có bàn bạc đến cái việc là quan hệ lâu dài giữa Uh, sinh viên Hoa Kỳ và sinh viên Việt Nam uh, và trong đó có cái đề xuất là uh, sẽ có một cái uh, uh, hiệp ước giữa hai bên. And uh, on December 1st, 1970, the Student Union of Saigon, Huế, Cần Thơ, Đà Lạt, Vạn Hạnh and Saigon Student issued a joint statement on peace consisting of four points, including two main points. The southern political issue should be resolved in the spirit of nation self-determination and U.S. military and Israel has to withdraw. Nội dung của tuyên bố chung, nội dung của tuyên bố chung và cũng tương tự như đến hôm đến khi mà có thành lập cái hiệp hội, cái hiệp ước thì nhằm mục đích là đòi hỏi là giải quyết hòa bình Việt Nam. Trên, trong tinh thần dân tộc tự quyết và quân đội Mỹ và đồng minh phải rút về nước. Yeah. Ngày 17 tháng 2 năm 70, phái đoàn sinh viên Hoa Kỳ và các trí thức các nước gồm 15 thành viên do chủ tịch sinh viên David Ipsin dẫn đầu ký vào hiệp ước hòa bình cùng với chủ tịch tổng hội sinh viên Hòa Hà Nội Đỗ Văn Hiền, chủ tịch sinh viên mặt trận giải phóng là chị Nguyễn Thị Châu À, thủ tướng Phạm, có thủ tướng Phạm Văn Đồng chứng kiến lễ ký nội dung yêu cầu rút quân Mỹ ra khỏi Việt Nam ngưng ngay ủng hộ Nguyễn Văn Thiệu Hoa Kỳ tôn trọng độc lập hòa bình hòa bình trung lập của Lào Việt Nam Campuchia. In on December of 1970, the delegation of students and intellectuals of America and uh, other 15 members country led by student president David Ipshin signed the peace treaty together with the president of Hanoi Union Do Van Hien and the student uh, student president of the Southern Rep Liberation Front Nguyễn Thị Châu Prime Minister Phạm Văn Đồng witnessed the signing ceremony the agreement includes first the immediate withdrawal of the US military from Vietnam Second, immediate termination of the support provided from Nguyễn Văn Thiệu. Uh, Ma, excuse me, Mom. I want to hold that for later. Right now, you have established the history in the South of the creation of the idea of the People's Peace Treaty. Yeah. And that idea was brought by Palmer to the National Student Association. And so we want to turn to Jay Craven, who was, is a member of the Vietnam Peace Commemoration Committee and a filmmaker. We want to turn to Jay to speak about what happened at the National Student Association. Then we'll come back, okay, Jay. 
You unmute, yeah. Greetings to all of our Vietnamese friends. Um, I know there'll be some translation on that side, so maybe I should speak slowly. Um, uh, Nguyễn Thị Châu, first, uh, before you start your speak. Yeah. No, 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 we're coming back to her later. Right now, we want to continue the story, okay? Okay, okay. Go ahead, um, Jay. Yes, so, I, so I'm simply here to tell a fairly simple story of um, being a student leader at the National Student Association uh, where we voted to uh, approve the idea uh, of the People's Peace Treaty. Do we need, should we allow time? No, for just keep going, keep going. Okay. Um, we, we came together in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota at McAllister College uh, in August of 1970. Uh, for us, it was a very uh, important time, a very tense time because we had had in, in early May of 1970, a national student strike across the United States uh, to protest the US invasion of Cambodia and also shooting of students at Kent State. So we came together in August of 1970 at McAllister College in Minnesota, wanting to be um, powerful, wanting to say and do something powerful to oppose the war, the, the US war in Vietnam. And Charlie Palmer, the president of the National Student Association brought the, the, the proposal that he said he had received from the South Vietnamese Student Union, the Saigon Student Union, that he had received a proposal that the, United, that the US National Student Association send a student delegation to South Vietnam and to North Vietnam to make a peace treaty uh, with Vietnamese students. Uh, this was a new idea and it was an idea that uh, immediately uh, students were excited to support this idea. Um, actually, at first, the discussion was that perhaps we would meet student representatives in Geneva or in Prague. But as discussions continued, it became clear that no, the plan would be to travel to Vietnam, to Saigon and to Hanoi to meet with student leaders. Um, I was asked that fall to be one of the students to participate in the peace treaty delegation. And at that time, I was initially told that I would travel to Saigon. However, um, as the date became closer, um, it, be it became clear that the South Vietnamese government, the Chu Ki government and the US State Department uh, were not going to permit the National Student Association students to travel to South Vietnam. Um, but when I talked to David Ifshan about what we would do, he said, we may have a plan. And I said, what is the plan? And he said, I cannot tell you right now what the plan is. And uh, maybe that's a good moment for my friend, Doug Hostetter. To no, talk Larry about. comes. Oh, Larry you need comes Larry okay, now to talk about the meetings in Paris with Madame okay. Bing. Sounds fine. Good. Let, that's all I need to say for now. Okay. So you want me to go on, uh, yes. John? So on November 1st, uh, 1970, I went to Paris. Uh, I actually, that night I met Rennie Davis at the Dulles Airport in Washington, D.C. And Rennie, uh, as many of you know, was a very significant anti-war activist. He passed away, sadly, just a couple of months ago. Um, Rennie took out a, a yellow pad of paper and wrote a letter to Madame Bin, who was the uh, provisional uh, revolutionary government in South Vietnam. She was the ambassador to the Paris peace talks. Uh, from the PRG. Um, and Rennie basically introduced me to Madame Bin 
and asked me to go to Paris to explain to her what it is that we had in mind. So uh, I believe it was November 3rd, because it must, I'm sure I didn't meet with her the next day, but the following day I met her at the embassy and explained to her uh, what we had done at the National Student Association, uh, that we were organizing uh, this treaty. It was unclear to me at that moment exactly what the details would be, but basically briefing her and the other uh, people at the embassy on uh, the plans for what we wanted to do. Uh, by the way, I tried to meet with the American and the uh, the South Vietnamese governments, but of course they wouldn't want to meet with me, uh, which didn't surprise me, but I was had a very cordial meeting uh, with the PRG government. Uh, from there, uh, I went back to, well, actually from there, I went to, to Algeria and briefed the Black Panther Party leader, Eldridge Cleaver, who was in, um, in exile in Algeria in a, in a hope to get a coalition with the Black Panther Party which was, of course, at the time, a very prominent organization representing uh, uh, leftist or radical African-Americans in the United States. Uh, and uh, certainly Eldridge agreed that this was an important product project. I went back to the United States and, of course, the NSA, the National Student Association, at that point began the process of organizing the delegation, getting a hold of people like Jay and Doug and others, uh, really trying to make sure that we could have these meetings. And as, as Jay indicated, the intention was to send a delegation to both Hanoi and Saigon. But um, as uh, Jay and I'm sure Doug can explain, most of the uh, Americans were not able to get into Saigon. Jay, uh, I, Doug was the one exception. Um, simultaneous to this, we were also beginning the conversation about May Day, and that's a whole other discussion. And I believe this committee is gonna have a commemoration for May Day as well. But the People's Peace Treaty and May Day were very much intertwined. May Day was a massive demonstration in Washington, D.C. I believe about 10,000 people were arrested. Uh, it was at the time the largest uh, protest, I think, of its kind. Uh, but it was, in a sense, very much tied to the People's Peace Treaty as a way of kind of bringing this issue to the streets. But in the meantime, the beauty of the People's Peace Treaty was that it just made sense. It wasn't a radical document. It wasn't a document that you had to be a, a strong a left-wing kind of person to appreciate. All you had to do is understand that there was a group of people in the South and in the North of Vietnam and in the United States, uh, students who came, came to a relatively simple understanding about how this war could end. And one of the beauties of the People's Peace Treaty is it actually is not dramatically that different than the final treaty that thousands of deaths later was, was eventually signed by the government. So that's pretty much where NSA, National Student Association, came in. Uh, the Paris meetings were really important because it got the Vietnamese uh, PRG government uh, with, at the Paris Peace Talks very much on board. Great. Um, if you look at the top of the chat, you'll see a link to our page with the biographies of all of the speakers. Um, Larry has a long professional career in uh, you'll discover what that is, and also you can look at his own web page. Um, I'm going to actually change the order a little bit now, Tim, and I'm going to go straight to Doug and then come back to you. Um, but to continue this sequence, um, right now we have mom meeting in Saigon with Charlie Palmer, the president of NSA taking the idea to the NSA Congress that Jay was, and then Larry carrying the idea to the PRG office in Paris. And then there was this person who went to Saigon to actually meet with the students, Doug. Hi, I'm Doug Hostetter, and uh, I was a graduate student at the time uh, was not on the original delegation of 14 students from across the United States that uh, had been nominated for the um, NSA delegation. Uh, but one of the organizers um, approached me knowing that I spoke Vietnamese fluently at the time. I had uh, done my alternative service to the military working with the Mennonites in Tham Ki Quang Nam uh, for about three years. And so I was actually uh, quite fluent in Vietnamese and um, in graduate school. And they approached me and said, would you like to go with the 
National Student Association delegation um, to Vietnam. And of course, I was very excited to do that. And they said, uh, we understand that, um, that the Saigon government is not allowing in uh, students at this time. Um, and uh, we don't think the National Student Association delegation will get in. So if you would leave a week before the delegation is supposed to leave, we'll leave you off the list of the students and uh, you can travel as a sociologist on vacation, not as a student. And so I was able to travel, uh, got into uh, the Saigon airport without any difficulties and uh, was able to meet with Win uh, uh, Tan Mam and uh, uh, Vu Tizung and other students there in Saigon, we were warmly welcomed. Uh, we had good meetings. I had about a week um, uh, to visit with old friends in Vietnam. And, and then we had uh, uh, a demonstration in, in Saigon. And then before we were to leave, uh, mom said to me, it's, it will be important to do a press conference to announce the People's Peace Treaty. Well, I think mom is much braver than I was. And I said, no, mom, th that would be very dangerous. So I announced the People's Peace Treaty when I went through customs at uh, Tan Sanuit Airport, uh, I might just disappear and nobody would ever hear from me again. And so, uh, but mom said, no, we have, to, we have to do a press conference or they will say that this was only dreamed up in Hanoi uh, with the U.S. and there was no South Vietnamese participation. So the compromise was that we would do a secret press conference. We would select the most trusted American journalist and the most trusted Vietnamese journalist and we would meet and announce the People's Peace Treaty and then they would um, um, hold their stories until after I was out of Vietnam. And, I don't remember who the Vietnamese journalist was, but I do remember uh, Dan Sutherland from the Christian Science Monitor was the uh, American journalist. And we had our press conference. I left, had no problems, flew to Bangkok, and then on to Vientiane. But I had uh, two days layover in Vientiane to get my visa for Hanoi and um, uh, uh, to, uh, so I had a couple days there. And on, on my second day there, I went to meet a journalist friend in the hotel and he said, have the police found you yet? And I said, no, how do you know the police are looking for me? And they said, well, they, they went up to an American at the bar that looked a little bit like you. And they said, are you Doug Hostetter? And the guy said, no, no, I'm not. Actually, Jay, it was one of our other uh, members of our delegation. And uh, uh, so he said, if, if you're carrying anything that you don't want the Laotian police to get a hold of, you might want to get rid of it quickly. So I quickly went back to the hotel. I gave the People's Peace Treaty to the journalist and then uh, came back. Uh, and I said, please give it to me tomorrow when I leave for Hanoi. So I went back to my hotel. And as soon as I got there, there were four Laotian police uh, waiting for me. And uh, they said they wanted to come in and search through my luggage and everything. And they didn't know exactly what they were looking for, which was fortunate. Um, um, none of them spoke Vietnamese um, and only the top colonel spoke some English and that wasn't good. Um, but they went through and uh, they pulled out a lot of papers and books and things. But since they didn't know what they were looking for, they assumed that they had found the right papers. And um, the next morning, the journalist gave me the peace treaty and I went on to Hanoi without any problems. Okay, thank you, Doug. So what we're gonna do now is if mom has anything more he would like to say about the meetings that Doug described, you should say it now. And Vu Zung, who was also part of the uh, Saigon Student Union, may have some things also to say about those meetings. And then we'll turn to Tian for the larger picture. So, Mom, do you have 
anything in addition about the meetings that Doug was talking about? Uh, uh, phải nói rằng uh, uh, đối với anh uh, Dr. Foster đó là chúng tôi rất là um, rất là vui là gặp ảnh và gặp anh uh, Dr. và anh cũng rất là dũng cảm bởi vì chế độ Sài Gòn chính quyền Sài Gòn là họ tung ra nhiều cái uh, mật vụ lắm uh, không dễ gì uh, mà uh, cái người nước ngoài mà tiếp xúc với giới sinh viên Việt Nam thì dễ đâu nhưng mà phải nói là à, anh à, Đốt cũng à, hết sức là à, tìm cách à, để mà liên lạc với tổng hội sinh viên Việt Nam. So I was uh, very uh, very happy and very uh, glad at that time to meet with um, Doc uh, Hostetter and Doc uh, Hostetter is uh, very brave to come to Vietnam. And as you know that the, the Saigon government at that time is very strict and is now and and they have a lot of cover uh, police and um, and it's very hard to uh, approach Vietnamese student at that time uh, exp uh, especially the uh, um, uh, foreign uh, students the foreign people uh, tôi và anh Đốt uh, thường hay gặp uh, ở tại khách sạn và các uh, và trong chùa uh, bởi vì uh, những nơi đó thì uh, cũng ít có uh, phát hiện được cái, cái cái người nước ngoài mà đến uh, liên lạc với uh, sinh viên Việt Nam uh, 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 trong khi đó thì uh, uh, họ tìm cách uh, vừa bắt vừa bắt tôi và bắt uh, học sinh uh, Lê Văn Nuôi là chủ tịch của tổng đoàn học sinh và tôi là chủ tịch tổng hội sinh viên Sài Gòn Nên sau cái hiệp ước này á Mom, let her translate. Trans, let her translate. So, uh, the Doctor and uh, and me usually met uh, at a, uh, um, but secretly uh, in a hotels or in a pagoda, where uh, hard to find um, to to find out the meeting. And um, uh, um, at that time, the um, Saigon government. Uh, wanted to um, to arrest um, me uh, Mr. Mum and um, Mr. Levan Nui as the associate uh, the president of association uh, uh, of students union um, cho nên là ngày tháng 11 cuối tháng 11 sau cái hiệp ước đó, thì uh, học sinh Levan Nui bị bắt rồi uh, 5 tháng 12 5 tháng giêng À, năm 72 thì tôi bị bắt và coi như kết thúc cái phần à, hoạt động sinh viên của tôi và anh Lê Văn Nuôi. And late um, uh, late uh, 1971, uh, Mr. Lê Văn Nuôi were arrested and later on me were arrested uh, later uh, 1972 and uh, the demonstration was ended uh, with me and uh, Mr. Lê Văn Nuôi at that time. Và như vậy là Uh, tôi bị giam tới uh, 28 tháng 4 năm 1975 uh, được tự do uh, dưới cái uh, uh, lúc mà uh, tổng thống Dương Minh uh, uh, nhậm chức. I I were imprisoned until uh, 28 uh, April of 1975 uh, when the president Dương Văn Minh uh, get power. Thank you. So, Vu, Zung Vu uh, was also in the Saigon Student Union. If you want to unmute yourself and uh, if you have some stories to add to what Mom and Doug have said. Uh, good evening, everybody. Like, uh, I'm very. Uh, honored to be in this uh, group and talking to all of you. Uh, I think that uh, what I have been listening is very fascinating, it's just like, uh, and uh, from the last uh, uh, webinar, the, the very first one, and then putting together with the pieces today, I think we are putting the, the pieces of puzzle in terms of like how we, um, like young people, like how we get together and then 
we created the uh, opportunity to make the, um, the peace treaty, uh, the uh, aspirations for to end the war and uh, to bring peace to Vietnam a reality because like um, I say that I was fascinated uh, with uh, like Jay and uh, Larry and Doc, you know, like going all over the, uh, the countries and then um, advocating for peace and uh, also like from the Saigon Student Union and the National Student Union, like uh, we, uh, we were quick to participate and to uh, make um, a desire for, to end the war into a reality, which is the peace treaty. Because like, um, as for me, like I think that I grew up, you know, like uh, just learning one after the other, like the uh, stories of war and then witness uh, was. And then um, my teacher, who is like Thich Nhat Hanh, I remember that yeah, reading his book, uh, the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, Lotus in a Sea of Fire. And then I remember that he was the, the very first one who uh, went to the state in spite of all the dangers and then talk about like advocating a, a for an end of the war. Like immediately he already proposed like, um, the withdrawing of the uh, American, the uh, stopping yeah. of the bombing, and then. Right. Uh, uh, so, the do you is there anything more specific uh, about the meetings in Saigon? The meetings in Saigon, I think that uh, what uh, Ma has already mentioned. Okay. And I, All right. As far as I can remember, is like it's just like we were very buoyant, and then I was like uh, connecting with. Uh, like I had the opportunity to meet Doc Hustetter, but uh, my main uh, colleagues were like uh, Don Luz, who were working with the uh, Reconciliation and uh, uh, the, the World Council of Churches, Tom Fox, and with all the, uh, um, the media, with the reporters. And so I jump in and then uh, serve as like, um, what I, in my capacity, like to connect, you know, the, the media to, the, uh, to us, so that we can build a movement. And Great. I think that's, yeah. Thank you. Um, COVID has done many terrible things, but it has also created this world of Zoom uh, so that Zungwu is actually in Toronto. So, I am in Vancouver. <laughs> Vancouver, sorry. I thought Toronto, <laughs> Vancouver. Yeah. A much lovelier I am, city. I uh, here, you know, one yeah, thing Van to, uh, Vancouver is a much more beautiful place to be. So. Yeah, with the COVID, I had uh, one uh, vaccination shot. Uh, that okay. Had so, at any rate, we bring the pieces together from different parts yeah. of the world. So now we go to Tian Feng Tian, who has a, a very important history of what else was going on in Saigon in terms of opposition to the war. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Um, Dear American and Vietnamese friends, and uh, it's very emotional for me uh, to reflect on the peace movement of the mid 60s. It was a time of turbulence for people in all walks of life, from street vendors to patriotic intellectuals, especially as Mr. Mum said, when the enemies is at the gates, all the Vietnamese would take up arms to stop the war. So the, I, I want to reflect on the, on the Vietnamese women's movement for peace uh, because it was a it you know it's a it's a the women who also uh, took uh, arms which is a uh, not uh, usually the, the the thing to do for women who are supposed to be housewives so this is an extraordinary movement and at that time I think that not only the women but all the families were also uh, participating and my family was no exception my mother, uh, Mrs. Nobatan, a lawyer who was trained at Columbia University in New York, a law school, uh, returned to Saigon to found the Saigon uh, School of Law. And after a few years, she decided that it was not what she was expecting. And she realized that the country was as a battlefield. So she uh, decided that it was uh, time to take action. And together with other patriots, she signed a petition for peace. 
And for that, she was arrested, then released and imprisoned four times. I want to quote, I don't know if I have enough time, but at that time, after she was released, she met with General Westmoreland. And at the reception, he asked, Madam Tan, do, uh, we are going to win the war. And in 18 months, I'm sure that uh, Vietnam was, uh, will be uh, uh, pro-American. And she said, General Westmoreland, I, I can bet with you that in, six, in 18 months, you, 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 you will lose the war. And in, in fact, he lost the war and he, he was replaced as a commander of the American forces. And she, she, at that time she was in prison and she didn't get the winnings of her bet. You know, so this is a, a quote. Uh, I think that uh, at that time she recognized that to be successful, she had to unite forces and establish alliances with many women's group in the city. Uh, among them were the women uh, from 36 Saigon markets, the Women League for Human Dignity, the Mothers of the Students Movement, many other uh, women's uh, forces. And also at that time, what I was doing, I was distributing to the US and Vietnamese uh, media, the pamphlets. And it is extraordinary because the whole family participated. The pamphlets were written by my mother my father designed uh, the uh, under stencils. At that time, we were using stencils, and my brothers were Ronio type on the music of Hotel California. Do you know why? Because the the sound of the Ronio the Ronio was so strong, so we had to put the American music. And because uh, outside of our house there was surveillance, the the police were at the gate. So we had to put the music so they wouldn't know that we were printing underground. So this is uh, what I want to say about uh, my family. And I also know that at that time, she realized that she needed to found uh, the uh, organization that means the women's right to live. And in particular with the Buddhist nuns, uh, she uh, was with the venerable Wen Lian. And even the religious organization had to demonstrate in the street. And I have posted a photo of uh, her being in Bible wires. And I asked uh, John to uh, show to the, to the public the, what she was doing, demonstrating uh, with tear ga uh, gas and uh, they were beaten by the police. So there were also many peace organizations uh, that were united, uh, like the Movement for National Self-Determination by lawyer uh, Min Long, the Committee for Peace Mo Mobilization 1965, the Vietnamese People's Making uh, Front by lawyer Chen Ngoc Lien, many professional associations, all workers, peasants, teachers, even uh, the Khao Dai religious group participated, the Buddhists and Catholics. I want also, also to say that the Association of Journalists demanded for uh, freedom of press and democratic uh, freedom. Um, demonstrating in front of the national parliament of the former regime, demanding the release of political prisoners because at that time uh, they were reclassified as not political prisoners, but as common law uh, prisoners. So I want to mention that um, it was a very uh, di um, difficult period for all the mass organizations uh, to participate in the peace uh, movement. Uh, what we also asked was the withdrawal of uh, American troops uh, to end the war, the self-determination of the Vietnamese to decide how to settle for peace. And later on, with the peace agreement, we wanted to uh, the all sides to respect the Paris uh, Peace Accord. Um, in the US at that time, among many peace-loving movements, an important investigation team led by Le Bella Absuk, member of the House of Representatives, came to invest, investigate on the treatment of political prisoners in South Vietnam. She came to our house where my mother was under house arrest. And she took my mother's arm and said, let's go out, out of the house since the Thieu regime has stated that there are no political prisoners. Her 70 page report to the House of Representatives 
included details about many thousands of suffering uh, Vietnamese activists like Mr. Mum and the demand for my mother release. It is a very inter interesting document uh, and I would encourage you uh, to dig into it because there are many details about the push, the peace, uh, the, the, uh, the peace uh, organizations. Uh, I, I have also uh, added to my report some samples of our family footage enterprise. The American war had a massive impact on Vietnamese lives. I was struggling between going to school, socially being boycotted because my mother was in prison. I had to visit my mother in prison once a week and feeding her. And it was, I was at, at that time 11 years old. So for a young girl without a mother living with brothers and a father, that was very difficult. My father lost his job from the Ministry of Fisheries and we finally had to eat. So I also had to work and I worked with uh, NBC, Thomas Coppola and Laura Palmer from uh, AP Associated Press so that they could uh, spread the pamphlets that I was distributing at that time. I was pre uh, pretending to teach French to them, but actually I was distributing all the brochure and the pamphlets and giving them all the details of what was going on in the prison. Um, she was also, uh, the first time she was in prison, um, she, it was a center for re-education and she was with the criminals, the prostitutes, but they all embraced her and she started to uh, kind of mobilize the mass and said, you don't, you don't do prostitution because Americans are here to be, uh, you know, uh, enemies. So finally, I want to say that after four times of being imprisoned and released in 1975, when the war was ended, now that uh, Liberation Day is approaching, I am saddened to reminisce uh, on those times, but also so happy to continue my mother's legacy as best as I can in the Ho Chi Minh Peace Committee as General Secretary and as an executive member of HPDF. Um, I would also uh, very much uh, encourage you to ask questions because in such a, a short period of time, it's difficult for me to uh, tell about what happened in or Saigon in those days. And I want to thank the organizers and all the participants to listen to me. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Tian. Um, we have a person in the room now who is a good transition. Uh, you've heard the story that Doug told about how he flew from Saigon to Vientiane to Hanoi with the treaty. Well, when he got to Hanoi, one of the people that he met with was Ms. Nguyen Thi Chao, who was a, the head of the liberated uh, area student group. And she is, but she lives in Ho Chi Minh City. So she is seated at the table now. Uh, not, that, and not that photo, no. So shall she go ahead or do you wanna go straight to Hanoi and then bring her back in? Yi. I mean, I mean, I think. So, okay. okay. So I think, uh, thank you, John. Maybe we come okay. back to Hanoi and then- John. That's fine. I was just getting signals that they wanted her on, but go ahead. Yeah. So we will now moderate this portion so of the you. program. Thank you, John. So uh, now we come to the story when the delegation from uh, uh, US delegation to Hanoi. And uh, of course, at that time, Mr. Uh, Phan Văn Trương and Mr. Cho will be there, and Rebecca Wilson. So we, now we want to hear the story when the PPT delegation visited Hanoi and they meet with some Vietnamese organization and peace activity, activists. So uh, first, uh, I want to invite Mr. Huynh first, because Mr. Huynh at the time worked for Vietnam Peace Committee and also for the Committee for Solidarity with American People. And we, we want him to share about the P 
people with movement in general in the North Democratic Republic of Vietnam at that time, and stories about people with cheating and also uh, recommending some, some new uh, proposal for the future to enhance the uh, US Vietnam uh, relation with the people to people channel. Thank you. No, he Okay. In fact, I am. Uh, I was a student at that time, so uh, I came to work with the peace committee later. But uh, at that time, I was a student. But all the events and activities and the news I heard from Paris, from Japan in the south, from the demonstration in the USA and in the city of Vietnam, that encouraged me and all of my friends. And I think that for the people of Vietnam to strengthen the determination and freedom to continue their fight for the liberation of the country. And uh, <clears throat> I, think, I think that the people to, uh, with treaty at that time uh, came to us is one of the very strong encouragement to the students of Vietnam at that time and for the people to continue their work, to continue their study and uh, to, uh, to be ready for uh, going to the pattern at any time. But there are many names at that time like uh, the, from the USA, like uh, Lockman Borison, Activity of uh, Tom Hayden, activity of De David Dellinger, and uh, many of you, and also from the South, like uh, uh, the activity of Internet, Eleven Neil, Louis, in Courage. And uh, I think that uh, with that, I want to, uh, to, to uh, read for you some uh, ideas. An opinion of Madam Bing in his in her memo in her memoir about American uh, demonstration and the people opinion at that time. This, this is uh, her memoir in English. I will want to read very shortly her uh, her opinion on the uh, anti-war movement at that time. Of course, I could not visit the United States during the war years, but I did meet Americans at gathering organized by U.S. group opposed to the war. Many U.S. delegations came to Paris to visit us, including congressmen, congressmen, relatives, family of American prisoners, women, and youth opposed to the war. They make a beautiful impression on us, particularly the American women who wanted the war to end and to have a peace for their so their husband, son, could avoid the trap and early death. They were keen to feel with sorrow and embarrassment after they learned that their husband and son had penetrated extreme act of cruelty on the Vietnamese people. In 1971, uh, women strive for peace organized a meeting in Canada. I, 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 I came there where American women met with women from the three countries of Indochina. Some of the women announced they are not the enemy, they are our sisters. There was many demonstrations, often with women as a, the majority of the participants. A, photo, a photographer from the demonstration in Miami, Florida in 1972 contained a detail particularly moving to me. One of the sister is wearing a t-shirt with an image of Madame Bing and the slogan, live, live like her. I recently learned that many women uh, wore Madame Bing's t-shirt at demonstration across the United States. 
those American women are supporting a Viet Cong woman leader. Yes, at that time, that same time, in the South Vietnam, American soldiers were being ordered to kill any Viet Cong. They saw those American women were truly in cults. Many Americans from different strata of society ardently opposed the US war and supported Vietnam. I want our people, the Vietnamese, always to remember their names. So that's, uh, and then he speak uh, about many friends in the US, like the Dab Ellinger from Hayden, uh, the Rini Davis, and uh, many of them. So with that, I, uh, secondly, I want to say that, that the people to a peace treaty encourage Vietnam. And uh, I think that it shows the solidarity of the people from between Vietnamese people and the American people, especially between the Jews students. And it's heritage, live until now. And I think that it will live forever in the relation between the Vietnamese people and Vietnam. And with that, I want to say something. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, uh, next, uh, I want to invite uh, Ms. Nguyen Thị Châu. Ms. Ms. Nguyen Thị Châu, at that time, was head of the delegation of South Vietnam Liberation Student Union. And she visited Hanoi during the time, the delegation of U.S. National Student Association were in Hanoi. And we, today, we want Ms. Châu, Ms. Châu share with us as the audience about the process of the contacts and meeting with the U.S. student delegation in Hanoi and, and he, he does the signing of a PPT in Hanoi. Not that. Right. So, uh, microphone, maybe. Tweet, tweet, yeah, okay. À, tôi xin cảm ơn sinh viên người nhân dân Mỹ đã đấu tranh cho hòa bình Việt Nam. I uh, really appreciate it. The uh, American effort uh, to fight for Vietnamese peace. Okay, can, uh, Mrs. Cho can tell the story about the, the contact and meeting with the U.S. student delegation when they were in Hanoi in uh, December 1971. It's, uh, uh, yeah. In Hanoi, you signed the, the people picture tape. I Tôi rất là xúc động và cả đoàn rất là xúc động và và chúng tôi mang cái tấm lòng đó về với đồng bào miền Nam chúng tôi kể lại bà con khóc người già trẻ cũng như trẻ em con nhau mà khóc trước một cái tấm lòng thương yêu trân trọng của sinh viên Mỹ, nhân dân Mỹ. 
cho nên là lúc đó thì tôi cũng có được thay mặt nhân dân kể chuyện ở trong chiến khu như thế nào cái cuộc sống mà bị áp bức bị bom đạn ác liệt là máy bay bay, bay bỏ bom làm cho người già trẻ con mới ra đời và những cháu mới trong bụng mẹ vừa tụng hình cũng xúc động Uh, so after after come back from um, a meeting uh, outside of Vietnam, I met with um, American friends, and um, I so touch and move at that time of uh, of uh, the cares of the the American and international friends to Vietnam uh, students and um, Vietnam uh, peoples. Um, I after the meeting, I, I bring back uh, the the kindness and um, and the uh, American heart to the South of Vietnam uh, peoples, and I retell the details of the meeting, and uh, they uh, and the people uh, I met at that time also really touched. Everybody cry, uh, cried. And uh, because uh, of uh, the cares of the American peoples and friends. And uh, in the meeting in Hanoi, I, I remember that I, I told them about the difficulties and the mis uh, mysteries of the Vietnamese people uh, living in the war. And, um, and we have to suffer from, uh, uh, from the misery made by American. Có lẽ là là cô không phát biểu thêm ạ. Maybe um, Miss Cho and his uh, her speech. Thank you, thank you very much. Now we come to Mr. Uh, Phạm Văn Trương. Mr. Phạm Văn Trương uh, uh, was born in 1970, 72. He's uh, in uh, Paris. He's a journalist at that time for the provisional revolution government. And Mr. Phạm Trương, Văn Trương will share with us a story when he in Hanoi to contact and meeting with US student then. And uh, the signing about the PPT signing uh, in December 1970. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, here is the uh, group of five you can recognize this in a photo taken by Duck, not by myself. Uh, this is the, the group of five representatives from uh, the Liberation Front, uh, which is still between with uh, here, quite a young, very, very young at that time. Oh, Joe, here. Uh, here is myself, still young, not as old as I am now. Yeah. And here is this photo taken with the uh, Prime Minister from Mando. This is Joe is here with a, a scarf. scarf. Yeah. And uh, me here? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm glad to uh, see all of you here today. Uh, many directly and others uh, through the web both veterans of uh, in the late 70s or even 80s like myself, and also persons of much younger generations. But I am thinking most of two of the four signers of the PPT, the late Lo Van Hien and the late David Ifshi, uh, they are no longer with us today. But I do believe that up there, they could be happy to see that down here, we are 
following in their footsteps. The events in Hanoi and Saigon in December 1970 were not the first time representatives of people's organizations from the United States and the two parts of Vietnam met in joint efforts to end the war and bring peace back to Vietnam. Uh, for instance, there have been such meetings in Jakarta, Indonesia in 1965, in Paris, France in 1967, in Bratislava, Slovakia now, also in 1967, and in Niagara Falls in Canada, just across the US border in 1969. But all these events were held outside Vietnam, while the PPT events took place right on Vietnamese soil, where the war was raging, especially in Saigon, but in particular, from where the US military command was directing the war day in, day out. Besides, while joining the other events were three groups, American, Democratic Republic of Vietnam or North Vietnam, and then Liberation Front or Provisional Revolutionary Government for South Vietnam. While in 1970, the meetings put together four groups, as Ambassador Phương Nga mentioned in her opening remarks. Apart from the original, the above set three groups, there was also a group representing the Saigon-based student movement, led by the newly elected President Quinn Tan Mam. Newly, yeah. And the Saigon student movement was, as just described by Ms. Ngo Phương Thien, a part of the urban people's movements and they emerged in many cities of South Vietnam in the wake of the 1968 peace offensive. Thus, participation of the Vietnamese in the 1970 events was, I think, more comprehensive. Um, that's things of half a century past. Over that time, relations between Vietnam and the United States, particularly between the people of the two countries, have gone a long way. Yet, there remains much that could be done and that should be done. And I think both of us, Vietnamese, and Americans uh, to uphold the spirit of the 1970s and make further contributions in the new situation. My last remark. Following the 1970 PPT, the Paris Agreements were signed in 1973, and then peace was actually restored in 1975. 46 years have elapsed since, but multiple consequences of the war still remain. There are millions of Vietnamese victims of the dioxin-laden Agent Orange who need support. There are thousands of landmines and other unexploded ordnance that need removal. And there is the same peace that all of us have made contributions for its return. That peace is still not fully free from threats. So I think 
all that requires of us veterans to make further efforts and our efforts are to be joined by others from younger generations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Phantom Chiam. Uh, John, there, I don't know, Becca Winston today can speak available or no? Yeah, no, Becca is ill, so uh, okay. Doug and Jay will oh, talk yeah. about the uh, American experience in Hanoi, yeah. the meetings, and then I will see if Keith Parker can, who is in the audience, can join us. Um, and then after that, I think we'll spend, we'll go a little bit longer. We'll have some more open discussion between the participants. But first, Doug and Jay should talk about the Hanoi piece. Yes, uh, in, the, in uh, December 1970, uh, Jay uh, Craven and uh, Don Hossetter uh, in the uh, US student division in Hanoi to sign the project. So I want uh, Doug and Jay who can, uh, you know, add, you know, something to to the so that the audience can uh, share with you. Uh, I, I would suggest that Doug go and then Keith. We we go in on Keith, and if anybody else has any questions, I'm happy to talk. But since we're okay. getting a little bit long yeah. here, I think that because Doug also uh, understands Vietnamese, I think he can bring some perspective uh, to. Uh, the nature of the conversations, and I'd like very much for Keith to also have something to say. Okay. Okay, uh, this is the uh, photo taken with uh, Prime Minister Phan Van Dam um, at the end of our signing of the peace treaty. Um, we were welcomed and incredibly well in Hanoi. Um, by everybody that we met. It is an amazing experience as an American to travel to a country that your nation is at war with and to be welcomed by the inhabitants of that country. And even while we were there, to be rushed into mom shelters from the American uh, planes, jets that were flying over while we were there. Um, we were also introduced to some of the women who were victims of Agent Orange, and we saw some of the children who uh, suffered maladies because of this. Um, I think probably the most impressive thing to me was meeting with the Prime Minister Phan Van Dam. I wrote in my journal uh, after that meeting. Um, the Prime Minister congratulated us on our efforts and warned us that we must have courage. And perhaps some of us would go to prison for our efforts for the People's Peace Treaty. Actually, only Wintan Mam, the president of the Saigon Student Union, uh, subsequently was arrested and spent two years in the Kuche prison. None of the American delegation actually were uh, arrested as a result of our actions. The Prime Minister then went on and ended his our time together saying, we are all human. We have the same feelings. There is no longer space that separates us. Satellites travel around the world in 90 minutes. Why can't we all be friends? Okay. Did you have anything? Keith, Keith, are you there? Yes. Do you want to turn on your camera? Um, I would if I... There it is. I see it. Okay. There you go. Hey, Doug, you, want to, you should put the picture down. Go ahead, Keith. Well, I, again... I congratulate you and, and others for making this program possible tonight. Uh, it's, it's amazing to think that this has been 50 years ago in our lives, and yet it comes alive as if 
it was just yesterday. Um, it was one of the most uh, profound experiences in my life, an experience that I've carried forward uh, throughout my life. And I will, I will never forget the strength, the resilience, and just the, the humanity of the Vietnamese people we were able to meet 50 years ago. That's something that has always stayed with me. Keith, could you say something about what happened to you when you went home? Well, I, when I went home, I was threatened with, uh, I went home to Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana, and I was threatened with uh, prosecution mm -hmm. under the Logan Act, which is engaging uh, with a foreign nation uh, against U.S. policy. And my lawyer's response and my response was, this was not a war that had been declared by the U.S. government. And so until you were willing to put it up to a vote uh, to declare war on the Republic of Vietnam, uh, I have not violated the Logan Act. But I was threatened with that and threatened with other kinds of, of things from people who uh, didn't appreciate the fact that I was young and black and a member of the Black Panther Party at that time, uh, going against US policy. And Indiana was clearly, if you remember the bumper sticker, America, love it or leave it, it was a love it or leave it kind of state. Jay, do you wanna add something in the- Sure. Yeah, I'll tell a little story. And, and uh, the, the first night we were in Hanoi, we were taken to uh, visit the circus. We went to a circus performance in Hanoi and there was uh, a clown show uh, where the, the clown, the, the, the comedy was a South Vietnamese shoeshine boy who goes and sets up his shoeshine box uh, and then he puts next to the shoeshine box a sign and it says Yankee go home. And um, a South Vietnamese soldier, a Saigon puppet soldier, walks by and is, is afraid that he must do something about the sign or else the Americans will be, up, will be unhappy. So he goes and he, 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 he harasses, he pushes the South Vietnamese um, soldier and, uh, um, and, and and the South Vietnamese and, and the South Vietnamese soldier, uh, he, he takes the shoe shine brush and he hits him over the head, and the South Vietnamese soldier uh, gets knocked out. And so now the shoe shine boy has to figure out what to do. So he puts the Saigon soldier, his the top half of his body, into the shoe shine box with his legs outside of the shoe shine box, and and then he sits on the box so that the legs look like they are his legs. And then an American soldier comes by, sees the sign and takes the South Vietnamese soldier, ties up his legs and pulls him off. And so the American soldier is pulling off the South Vietnamese soldier into the distance and the shoeshine boy takes his shoeshine box and runs off the stage. Anyway, I don't know if I told the story very well, but it was very funny. And what it, what it struck me as that it was silly and it took a view towards the American soldier and took a view towards the South Vietnamese soldier that was, uh, that was humorous. It was not hateful, it was humorous. Uh, that even in the, in the midst of war, the Vietnamese were able to laugh and to have fun and to even portray the American enemy as somebody who was human and who could be silly and could be comic. Uh, and the last thing I'll say is the next morning I walked into the streets in Hanoi before breakfast and 200 school children surrounded me, very curious uh, as who I was, but they, they figured it out that I was American and they sang a song to me and it was lovely and uh, they all began, one, one started singing, the others joined and after it was over, a, a, a schoolboy, about a 12 year old schoolboy, stepped forward and whistled the theme song to the American British movie, The Bridge Over the River Kwai. And again, I said, even when it is the enemy, they approach as humans. What Doug was saying about Pham Van Dong, 
They approached us as humans. They approached us as friends. Yes. Yeah. So, do any of the participants in Ho Chi Minh City have any uh, anything else they would like to say or any questions they want to ask of Doug or Jay or Keith? Or do any of the people in Hanoi have questions of each other or additional things you want to say? But let's go first to Ho Chi Minh City if you have anything else you want to say. You have to unmute yourself if you do. There you go. Okay. So anyone muốn hỏi, muốn hỏi là anh sao sao uh, I would like uh, to ask if um, uh, Sharp Farmer is still alive and uh, and what she, uh, he's doing now. Larry. So Charlie and I have been friends. He was the one who hired me at the National Student Association. We've been friends since 1967 when I was at Berkeley. And I did speak with him um, right before we had our first event. And um, he has a slightly different set of memories. Um, he became a judge in California, a very important Superior Court judge. And um, he distantly remembered going to, going to Vietnam, he remembered the trip. And uh, he recalls having met with Vietnamese students. Uh, but he, you know, at that point, after that original meeting, uh, he went off to Yale Law School. And, uh, you know, and it was David Ifshan who took over as president of the National Student Association and went forward with the treaty. But certainly Charlie uh, remained a progressive uh, person uh, throughout his career. And he's now retired and living in Southern California. And he has a son uh, named Mike Aubert, screenwriter. Uh, any other question from Ho Chi Minh City or comment? or from the Americans, from Doug or Jay, whether you had some questions you wanted to ask, I think. I should, uh, I should mention, I have had communication with uh, Becca Wilson, who was a part of our delegation, and uh, she's having some medical problems this evening, so she cannot be with us, but she asked me specifically to give her greetings to uh, Mrs. Nguyen Thi Chow, who she met in Hanoi. And um, she remembers a scarf that uh, Ms. Chow gave to her, um, which she has always treasured and has it on the wall of her apartment. She says it's a bit faded now, but it still carries that warmth and that friendship between her and Mrs. Chow. Uh, can I make one comment about my meeting with Madam Bin? Um, you know, being a young person in America, hearing about the Viet Cong, as they were called, the National Liberation Front, I must admit, even though I was a strong supporter of the Vietnamese people and a strong anti-war activist, I still had a stereotype, an impression of the Vietnamese people as, how can I say this, um, militant and dedicated, but I, I didn't get the sense, that I, I had no way of knowing the warmth of the people. And what I really remember about Madame Vin, a very important diplomat, you know, ambassador to the Paris Peace Talks, how much time she spent talking to, asking me about my family, about my personal life, and just this sense, sort of what Jay was saying and what others were saying, that this was, these were human beings, these were, these were people, very caring people. And you know, she was the first Vietnamese person I actually ever met, uh, at least certainly outside the United States. But it really is something that, that has stayed with me to this day. Uh, and, and that sense of friendship that went beyond our camaraderie about the war, just the fact that uh, at the end of the day, we were all people and, and, and had a reason to care about each other. So th that's a memory that is going to stay with me forever. Anyone else want to? Doug or Jay, or Chung or Huynh, anybody have any 
final uh, comments or questions? Well, we, we know that one of the things that to me was important about the peace treaty was that it allowed us to talk about the Saigon Student Union and about the bravery of Nobatan and of Wintan Mam uh, and of the people that were struggling against Chu right in Saigon. Of course, we also talked about our friends in North Vietnam and the NLF as well. But Americans did not know that in Saigon, there was a peace movement opposed to the American occupation. And the peace treaty, more than anything I knew, allowed us to explain that, describe it. And so the courage of the South Vietnamese peace movement gave us strength and, and made our, our message larger. So I, I have a question. Is it okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, I want to ask uh, the American, American friends a question that how and what we are going to do to preach the message and spirit of PPT to the young and students of Vietnam and USA now? I ask the American friends. You, you understand me? Yes, I do. Yeah. Doug, do you want to say something, John? Go ahead. You're the one who's teaching. You're in most touch with students. I know. Well, <clears throat> part of what VPCC does okay. is to create this recording will become part of the record and archive for peop for younger people to learn about what happened with the People's Peace Treaty and to be able to see uh, people coming together after 50 years to remember it. Uh, and young peace activists in the US, are they are very interested in the history. And so we can share that. Uh, at the same time, we are trying, in, in many of the activities that we do, we also make a connection to what is going on now. Uh, and, ha and this provides the, move the, the movements of today are able to learn from and be talking to the activists of 50 years ago. And so the idea is to make that connection and for us to support them and to help them be stronger. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> I think it is this some of the, a couple of people have asked questions about the current situation and the threats against that Madame Nya referred to of the new kinds of threats against Vietnamese sovereignty from its own region. Um, I think that we are in a very strange situation at this point in, in which there are two completely different realities. One is the reality of 50 years ago. One is the reality that we are part of and gets treated sometimes in the media um, and some small portion of the current generation cares about. But oddly, the people who know more about Vietnam today are often people who may be 10 or 20 years younger than us, who have traveled as tourists, or even younger than that, who have been students in Vietnam or have had Vietnamese students in their universities. Um, or the connection between Viet Q, between Vietnamese Americans and Vietnam, and then the marriages between Americans and Vietnamese Americans. And, and there's, so the, the relationship to the present, I think, uh, does not rest very much on the shoulders of the people who were part of the anti-war movement uh, that's and the younger people, the activists today, are so preoccupied with domestic issues in the United States, racism in particular, 
um, and the conflict of policing uh, of black and brown communities, that that's an environment, that those are the things that are really driving the people today who would be, have, who are like we were 50 years ago. Um, so there's, I think there's a lot of connections between the two countries, but they go through a very different channel. They go through tourism and they go through educational exchange and they go through personal relationships. Um, and I think the uh, question of how that plays out in the next five or 10 years, if the situation between the US and China becomes uh, even more confrontational, obviously one of the confrontation points is the East Sea, the South China Sea. And how those levels of more contemporary relationships play out, I think is, is unknown to me. I don't know if, if Doug or Jay or Larry or Keith have a, an opinion about that, but that would be my uh, too long and complicated answer to. If I can make a, if I can make a follow up to John's comment about, I know sometimes when you look at a country from afar, you see the headlines on the news and you may not see sort of what's behind the news. And for example, in America, uh, John talked about racism and racism is real. It's a serious problem and it's not just against African-Americans, Asian-Americans have undergone a, a, a significant amount of hate crimes that you probably have heard stories about the murders in Atlanta of, of the Asian women and other cases where, where Asians in San Francisco and, and it doesn't matter whether they're Chinese or Japanese or Vietnamese or Korean, uh, racists don't even, probably can't even tell the difference. They just, there's been an outlash. But in the, the context of that is that that's a very, very small percentage of American people. Uh, the American young people that I know, uh, my, my, my son, my daughter, their friends, uh, are far more inclusive, far less racist than my generation was. Uh, far more international in their thinking, far more tolerant, far more accepting of, of relationships between people of different uh, nationalities and colors. So um, I think that, that in some ways, if you're reading the news about what's going on in America, you're only getting a small portion of what really is going on in America, because there's, there's a lot of positive things happening in terms of a, an openness and a cultural awareness among young people that I probably doesn't get in the news as, as much as it should. But does it have an awareness about Vietnam, about the direction our two countries may be going? That's, I think- Probably we're not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think there's a lot of interest by Americans and by younger Americans to travel to Vietnam. <clears throat> Vietnam is a country that for young people has some mystery because of the history. It also has a lot of appeal. And young people who have traveled to Vietnam uh, come back with very positive stories. They like, there's good music at the clubs in Ho Chi Minh City and in <clears throat> Hanoi, and good food and beautiful places to see. And, and whether we like it or not, that's actually a very positive way for us to build stronger relations, is for people to actually go to Vietnam as we did and to meet Vietnamese people and to be there and have fun. Um, the younger generation appreciates that. And, and I've talked to many, many young people who have traveled to Vietnam now because it's so much easier. Uh, and I think that there is a much stronger relationship as a result. And also many American GIs, soldiers, have gone back to Vietnam because it was such a complex, uh, painful experience that they needed to make some connection to Vietnam that was positive after being there as soldiers. And I think that's also, so the, so the links to Vietnam are complicated, but they get stronger all the time. Let, let me add a, a point because I'm, I'm encouraged by, by Jay's comments. Uh, I've, I've worked at a university for 36 years and over those 36 years had um, hundreds of interns and 
you know, I was always amazed at the lack of depth in their knowledge. And I, I think with the, the rise of the internet, uh, their, their knowledge got even more shallow that they didn't take the time to, to really read uh, accounts from the war, from the beginnings of the war, from the depth of the war. You know, they were reliant on <clears throat> Wikipedia for uh, a snapshot five paragraph answer to a very, very complex set of questions. So I'm, I'm encouraged by what Jay is saying in terms of young people wanting to, to know more about the, about the, the period of Vietnam and, and a, a thousand year history of Vietnam. And then to actually have direct experience and interaction with Vietnamese uh, is that that's encouraging to me uh, because again I ran into too many students that as I say were Wikipedia reliant and wouldn't pick up a book. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. uh, yes, yeah. I think we're at the end. Uh, we've gone beyond the end in terms of uh, yes, our original but, uh, schedule. Uh, uh, so we, we have uh, some uh, questions from uh, participants here. So maybe oh, to okay. the <laughs> Yes. We have a um, uh, from now on one. Is there questions? Uh, is it important for younger generations to learn about this uh, part of history? So question for Vietnamese panelists, what do you think about the current uh, international solidarity with Vietnam <coughs> compared with the one in the war? And what should be done to maintain and develop the international solidarity with Vietnam? Another question is from uh, Mr. David Hawk. Uh, do you worry more about the future of the EC or about the future of the Maple River? And uh, one question about what happened to paragraph seven of the people picture uh, that it may be also to American. So that is a question to the Vietnamese panelists. So do you want to tackle that, Chung, or? Yes, I will try my best. Um, if I understand it correctly, uh, there is a question about uh, what do we think about uh, international solidarity in the uh, present situation. Uh, first, I think that uh, as the years pass, things are so changed. Uh, the world changes, Vietnam changes, the U.S. changes, everything changes, and everybody is changing. So I, I think we should also change our thinking. But there is something unchangeable, uh, that is the spirit. And I think the spirit of the 1970s should be kept unchanging, when depending on the specific circumstances of the specific periods, then from one side, for instance, the Vietnamese, we have to bring up to you, Americans, what we are doing and what we would like you to support us and vice versa. But there is something, uh, Orientals, have very often say that to, to take or to use the what is unchanged, unchangeable, to tackle what is always changing. What is unchangeable? The unchangeable is we have to think not only of our interests, of what concerns us alone, but we have to think of what concerns the other side or our partners. And during the war, for instance, we Vietnamese usually think that 
what we are fighting, we are suffering, we are making sacrifices, then well, it's quite natural that our friends have to support us. That may be wrong today. Today, for instance, when I am going out in another country to solicit their support for our struggle, I have to think of what they are needing. And we have, you see, to exchange solidarity, to take something as a minimum basis for our common interests, then that is something we have to think of now. Then, um, what else? Uh, oh, that is the, uh, what is more important to situate, in our opinion, what is more important to us, the situation in the East Sea or internationally, uh, usually called uh, the South China Sea or the Bacong Basin River, uh, River Basin. I think both are important to us. Thank you. Thank you. Now, anyone from the, do you have a question anymore? So I think that uh, <clears throat> the solidarity spirit is a basic character of the people in everywhere of the world. In the past and, 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 and as well as at present. But uh, for the Vietnam now, I think that to keep the stable and peace and security is uh, the most important and for development. So I think the, the, the situation like Mr. Chun said that is changing. Every, everything changed, but the solidarity spirit is still remaining. So I think that uh, for the Vietnam now, uh, not uh, the history of the repression is uh, uh, that uh, with the contribution of the, 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 the world public opinion and solidarity, uh, sentiment of the people are very important. But now we need solidarity also, but solidarity for our development. So I think that it is uh, very important now. So that spirit of the PPT still remain in Vietnam now. Nhi, do you have some final comments? Uh, uh, so I think that uh, today is uh, very important and we have a sister, several 50 uh, adversary of the peace treaty and it's also the right time, and because in uh, April uh, 2021, we will celebrate the 46th anniversary of the uh, end of the war, uh, peace, and reunification of Vietnam. So uh, we also uh, express yeah. our thanks, yeah. gratitude to the to the peace uh, uh, active active uh, activ activists, anti-war. Uh, and all and uh, different uh, movements in the U.S. Uh, and uh, including the uh, students, as uh, and uh, uh, SA and other uh, peace movements uh, and uh, in the, uh, organization in the 70s and 70s. So I think that uh, the, um, the the people PTT as uh, also the result of the cooperation. Uh, between the peace and uh, anti-war uh, movement in the U.S. and also the peace um, movement in the South Vietnam and the peace and the solidarities uh, in the North in the Democratic Republic of that Vietnam at that time. So uh, I think uh, it is this time we have appreciate and also pay gratitude to the all the people uh, American people and peace and the world and also. Uh, especially to the those who involved in the migration to to Vietnam uh, and so the South and the North Vietnam in seventy for the signing of PPT. And it's in, in the, our new time uh, area now when the two countries had a normalization and develop uh, with the uh, uh, comprehensive partnership of Vietnam US. So we should uh, also think about how to 
to find way how to, 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 to work together and how to, because, uh, and how to uh, transfer the, 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 the aspiration of the uh, old generation to young generation uh, in, in the new time. And, uh, and we want to learn the lesson from the, in the past to the, uh, to the, our time now, so that we can how to mobilize uh, Vietnamese and American to work for foster relation, better understanding region and cooperation between Vietnam and the United States. So I think that uh, today we, we also open many ideas for the, uh, what we can do in the, in the time to come. Maybe we have a more exchange of relation and or more uh, dialogues, uh, webinars in the COVID time, webinars and conferences. So we learn uh, for further understanding for Vietnam and uh, the US. And so that is, we can contribute to better relation. Thank you. Uh, may Joe. I? Yes. Uh, thank you so much. Um, allow me uh, to recall to all of us here a saying I very often heard during the war uh, from American friends. Keep your faith, maybe. Okay, thank you. Um, I wanted to thank Vietnam USA Society and the Union of Friendship Organizations, both in Hanoi and in Ho Chi Minh City. Um, thank all of the participants from the US, Canada, and Vietnam, both right. North and South. Um, and wanted to say that as soon as COVID permits and Nhi gives me a direction about the best time to come, we will do another trip. So people who haven't had a chance to see contemporary Vietnam and look at the historical aspects of it as well, you'd be welcome to come with us. Uh, and contemporary Vietnam is a marvel in many ways, including the fact that they have been much more successful than almost anyone in the world about the control of COVID. Um, they just have to protect themselves from all of the rest of us. <laughs> so they have to make the decision about when the doors get open. Um, finally, I just wanted to say, and uh, everybody I think is on our mailing list, we, have, we still have, uh, in addition to the panelists, 27 people at 1130 at night in New York. So I think that's a compliment <laughs> and many people will come back and actually watch the, the video, which will be on YouTube in a day or so. Uh, and everybody will get notified of that link. Um, we have a program about Dewey Canyon 3, the veterans demonstration in Washington on April 23rd. Um, Jay and I are working on a program on the May Day demonstrations, which will be on April 29th. And then on April 30th, um, I, this may just be self-indulgent, but I'm going to be showing slides from my trip to Hanoi on April 30th, 1975, and I'll be joined by Nayan Chanda of the Far Eastern Economic Review at that mm -hmm. point, who was in Saigon at the time of liberation, and Claudia Critch, who was in Saigon for liberation with the American Friends Service Committee. And who knows, mm -hmm. we, may, we may have some more people by the time of the 30th, but everybody will get those links. And if I, I think it was, uh, this was a very good evening. Um, the biggest disadvantage of course is that the time difference is such that it's hard to uh, find a time that's convenient in both countries, but due to the marvels of uh, recordings and such, it will be available for almost forever certainly beyond the time that any of us will be watching it. So uh, thank you all very much and uh, be well, enjoy your day in Vietnam and
good night, everybody <laughs> in, okay. in the Western Hemisphere. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Good night. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to